are keeping their cars longer these days, so we're going to give you the top 10 ways to improve the look and performance of your vehicle to keep it running even longer. Welcome to Truck U, I'm Matt Steele. Hi, I'm Bruno Massel. You know, today people are holding on to their cars and trucks a lot longer these days. I think I read somewhere about an average of 9.4 years, which really isn't that long of a time because engines today are designed to run a lot longer. I mean, years ago it was 100,000 miles, that was the number. Once you hit that, you trade it in for a new one. Well, today's stuff can run two, 300,000 miles as long as you do your regularly scheduled maintenance. Now, I've seen instances where you've got a Cummins diesel like this run a half a million miles. Right, our buddy picked this truck up for next to nothing. It's a 1995 Dodge. Cummins turbo diesel. It's got about 160,000 miles on it right now. So baby, it's just getting started, yeah. right? It's just getting warmed up. And we're going to help them keep it on the road a lot longer. Today, what we've compiled is kind of a top 10 list, if you will, of little easy things you can do to keep your vehicle on the road much longer. Now, keep in mind when you're watching this, we're not doing these in any particular order. So we haven't ranked them. It's just 10 general things. Now, everyone knows to change your oil, at least they should, right. you know, on regular schedule maintenance is where it's every 3,000 miles or you're running synthetic, six or 7,000 miles. We're going to go a little bit beyond that. And first thing we need to check is the brake fluid. That's something that's often neglected. I know I'm guilty of it, and I know you are. And I've seen that by just first glance, this guy's been guilty of it as well. Brake fluid's supposed to be clear, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it says to check it every two years or so, but realistically, who's going to do that? Now, we've got these little brake strips right here. And what we're going to do is test for copper inside the brake fluid. Now you bring this over, it's just like a pH strip that you would have messed around with when you were a kid, and the color will denote how much copper is in there. Now, here's the deal. When you put in the new brake fluid, it's packed with anti-corrosives. Over time, those break down, and as a result of the corrosion in the braking system, copper is made. And copper is really bad for your braking system if the copper content gets too high. So we want to cut that off and stop it before it becomes a problem. As you can see, he's up here towards the top of this list, so he's got a little bit too much copper in there. Yeah, the darker it gets, the worse it gets so it's definitely time to change out this fluid now there's a couple different ways you can do it there's kits out in the marketplace where we'll exchange it for it or you know they expend a few bucks if you use it on a regular basis it'll pay for itself but us we're gonna go the old school method and take a turkey baster out of Matt's wife's drawer and suck out all the brake fluid with it once we get done cleaning out the master cylinder what we're gonna end up doing is put some fresh clean fluid in then we're gonna go ahead and start pumping the brakes we'll crack the bleeders on the back end let the fluid run out so you see all the brown stuff exit out once you start seeing clear fluid coming out you know that the, the system's going to be contaminant free. Hey, our wives love when we use the kitchen utensils on the vehicles, right? You just have to make sure you clean them out real good or go drop a buck or two for a new one. That might be a better Get yeah, the idea. dollar store. <laughs> All right, so we've got the braking system all taken care of. Everything is flushed out. Brakes are bled. I topped it off. Now we're ready to move on to step number two. That looks a whole lot better, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it now, does. The next one's a real easy to want to check off the list. All you have to do is change out your air filter, and it's simply three little clips on this one, and it pops right out. Now, while it's easy to change, <clears throat> It's something definitely worth doing. Don't neglect it because you can pick up as much as 10% in fuel economy just by changing out a dirty air filter for a new clean one. Now, here's a new one. Here's the one we're taking out. And I've seen a lot worse, but yeah. it's definitely still worth changing. There's a little souvenir here for you. Well, thanks, man. Keep that on the tray. Not only will it keep you saving money at the gas pump, but it's also going to help the engine run a lot longer because it's not trying to suck in dirt, debris, and leaves into the engine while you're going down the road, which means it's going to perform a lot better as well. Hey, thanks for taking care of the hard stuff right there. You went all out with the air. I'm always selling out for you. Now it's time for number three on the list. It's the serpentine belt. It's a used truck. The thing's been squeaking all over the place when it came in, so we have no idea when the last time it was changed out. So we'll go down here and loosen up this tensioner, and we can pull this off. For you? I got it. Uh, there we go. All right, we're off. So we can get that out of there. And we'll just fish this around. And we've got to get it up here and around this fan, which is going to take a minute or two. Got that? Yep. Reach down. 
Now let's take a look at this old belt. There you go. Look at all the cracks in there like that. Now match that up against the new one. You can see this one's going to hold up much better. It's definitely time to change this thing out. Now they don't give these belts away for free. They cost a couple bucks, but think about the alternative. Driving down the road, this belt breaks. You've got a whole bunch of things not working, and that's going to add up to more money than this belt. I know what you're thinking. Some guys might say, well, I'll just cut it and drop it out of there. Then I don't have to wrap it around the fan. That'll be much quicker, right? But Murphy's Law, paragraph H, subsection 24B says that this belt that you got to replace it isn't going to be just right. Then you've got to find another vehicle to get back to the parts store to get the right belt. So you don't trust a 15-year-old kid behind the parts counter with, you, with your truck? <laughs> you never know. You never know. Hey, one thing you do want to check out, though, is this little diagram out here on the front of your vehicle. All of them will tell you exactly how that serpentine belt has to route. Without this, you're going to have a hard time getting that thing back on. Yeah, a lot of trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> Now, keeping with the theme of me stealing all the easy work today, I'm going to take off number four on our top 10 list, and that's checking your radiator for leaks. It's really easy to do. It only takes a few minutes, but you got to use some common sense. First of all, we're going to be taking off our radiator cap. Make sure you do it with the engine turned off and actually as it's cooled down because you got to take this thing off when it's hot, there's a pretty good chance you're going to burn yourself. Now, notice on the top of the cap, it says it's rated at 15 PSI. Make a mental note of that, note of that for a second because it'll come in handy. So we're going to take off the radiator cap. Put on our little pressure kit here. You can get it at a local parts store and it simply screws on. Now, the way this works, it's like a, a keg pump. Pump it up to 15 psi, just like that radiator cap says. We want to see if it'll be able to hold the pressure. So, a little bit more here. Now, immediately, you'll be able to tell if you've got a big leak because if you do, you'll see coolant pouring out right away and you want to stop and get that cleaned up because that can be hazardous to animals as well as yourself. So that's something you want to keep an eye out for. This one seems to be holding the pressure okay, but you want to let it sit for a little bit. That's a good time for us to take a break. We come back, if the pressure's still at 15 pounds, we can go ahead and start changing out the old fluid for some new. Welcome back to Truck U. Bruno took care of the pressure test. There's no leaks and everything is fine. Now it's time to roll on to number five, and that's to actually flush the coolant out of the whole system. So what we did was we got this little coolant flush kit. It's a nice little easy kit and it's really easy to do. This T, you just cut into your heater hose right in there and it slides in. You slide the hose over that, clamp it down, and then look at this. You've got this little hose fitting right there and it's nice and easy. Now when you're not using it, you put the cap on and you're fine. The next time you want to flush it out, the fitting's there and it's nice and easy. So once you get everything hooked up, this is also part of the kit right there. That's just going to stick right in there on the top of the radiator. So now you've got your hoses and everything's hooked up and ready to go. You get into the cab, fire up the truck, and turn the heater on. Then you go out, turn the hose on, and let it run for usually about five minutes. The name of the game, you want to watch it until it flows clear. That way you know that it's all out and it's done. Usually takes about five minutes or so. So step number six brings us underneath the truck to check out the entire steering assembly. Now you, what you want to do is a visual inspection. And no, I'm not cheating by using the lift. You can do this on the garage floor. I just want you guys to be able to see what we're pointing out. Now first thing is every time you see one of these little zert fittings right here, hit it with grease until you fill up the seal. This way your ball joints will stay lubricated. Now when you move over here, you can see right away that this ball joint, the seal is split on it. What's going to happen is not only the grease going to come out, but the dirt's going to go in and that'll eat up that ball joint. So that's not a good thing. Now the biggest thing you see right here is this thing is soaked with some sort of fluid, whether it's oil or hydraulic fluid, you don't know, but we did a little bit of an inspection and found that the steering box is leaking, and that makes sense because when we drove the truck in here, steering was a little loose. Not only is that going to cause a problem with steering, but it'll also cause you to wear out your tires unevenly. Another factor that can contribute to uneven tire wear is improper inflation pressure. You know what? It's really easy to check. It's something that's very important, and it's number seven on the list. A good idea is to check them at some kind of regular interval. Another good idea is keep a can of this in your vehicle. The fix a flat you know what? If you pick up one of the unexpected drywall screws or something, you can put this in. It'll get you down the road to where you can get the tire fixed and not totally have to get a brand new tire. That's the name of the game. But there are a lot of mysteries about this product, and for some answers about what fix a flat is and what it does, let's go check out the Truck U Science Lab.
Today in the lab, we want to take a look at a situation that has happened to all of us. You know the deal when you come back out to the parking lot and unbeknownst to you, you picked up a nail or a screw somewhere along the way and your tires flat. Well, what do you do now? Well, we all know the name fix a flat. It's a quick, easy way to get you back out onto the road. But what you may not know is actually what's going on inside the tire. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. So the first thing you want to do in that situation is get your valve stem in between the four and eight o'clock position. Then you're ready to apply. Now, before you start emptying this into the tire, make sure that you've got this on the valve stem correctly and you've tightened it all the way down. You want to use the entire can and once you get it in there, you want to drive your vehicle for about two to four miles. That way, it rolls around the tire, it finds the leak, and it seals it. Now, this is a temporary fix. Remember, this is designed to get you to a place where you can get some more air and eventually get your tire serviced. Once the fix -a flat goes in your tire and inflates it and seals the leak, this is actually what the product looks like a couple hours down the road. So let's take a look at some of the myths about fix -a flat. First of all, you hear guys say, oh, don't put that in your tire because when you take it off, it's going to go all over the place and make a big mess. Well, as you can see, it's a liquid down there. It's just floating around on the bottom of the tire. It's no big deal. It's not going to make a huge mess. Other guys say, oh, it's impossible to clean up. Well, there are some products on the market that are hard to clean up, but fix -a flat is water soluble. And we take a look at this, that's rolling around your tire. It's just nice and easy. You take the tire off, you can hose it out if you want to, or you just take a rag and it just wipes right off. It doesn't get much easier than that and you can get it all out of there. Also, whether it's on the tire or the rim, it's not going to hurt anything and it's going to stay on there. It's going to do its job and not cause any problems down the road. Another myth is that you spray that into the tire and it dries in like this big brick and throws the tire off of balance when you're going down the road. Obviously, you can see it right here. That is simply not true. Now, it's also non-flammable, so that's one less thing you've got to worry about. And your tire sensors that are on the inside that read the pressure to the inside of the vehicle when you're looking at that, if you've got those on your particular vehicle, you don't have to worry about that messing it up and getting any false readings. So, basically what we have are the Fix-A-Flat myths debunked, and this assignment today is done. My manual transmission doesn't shift smoothly. What can I do? We'll have the answer after the break. My manual transmission doesn't shift smoothly. What can I do? Internal components can have a lack of fluid lubrication on the sliding surfaces. Z-Max's micro lubrication soaks into those tight areas and gets lubrication back into those sliding surfaces. Using Z-Max in your transmission will keep it cooler and provide smoother operation. This tip is brought to you by Z-Max. Performance you can feel. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. Now, step number eight in our checklist here is kind of a two-part system, but it all involves your AC system. Now, if you've got a newer vehicle, you've got a cabin filter, which you need to change, which is located up here in the glove box. What it does, it filters the air coming through your vents. Now, what we're talking about initially, though, with your AC system a little more directly is the drain line coming from it. Now, if you're running your AC for a little while and you go to pull in your garage, you'll notice a drip of water on the ground, and that's totally normal. What happens all too often, though, people don't realize is that drain sucks up a lot of dirt and debris and gets clogged. When it gets clogged, it causes a real problem. If you look down on the floor here, the water has nowhere to go and it ends up on the floor of your truck, and that's not a good thing. An easy fix, though. All you have to do, hit it with an airline, clean it out, and problem solved. Step number nine is keep the inside clean. If you ever want to sell this thing, the resale value is going to be higher if it's nice and clean and it looks good inside. Today, we're going to do that with an entire line of products from Blue Magic. And it all starts right here with this carpet stain and spot lifter. If you've got kids or a pet or you've ever spilled coffee or pop in your vehicle when you're going down the road, you've got stains. Now, take a look at this. It's got the AccuSol tip right there. That's going to spray it wherever you want it. There's a stain there. Boom. You got it. You got it. You got it. 
that's all you have to do right there. You let it soak in, you blot it dry, and the stain is gone. The Blue Magic products are all guaranteed. They have a money back guarantee, in fact, and they're nice and easy to use. So you get your stains out, that's handled. Next thing you want to do is do some shampoo, and it's kind of like you're going to wash the hair of the carpet, right? And you can do that with the Heavy Foam Carpet Cleaner. This is nice and easy to use, and it's got the brush right on the cap, too, so you can get it nice and clean. So we'll show you what we're going to do here. We're going to get this up and looking good. All right. Now, you spray it down there and you watch it foam up, then you can really work it in with the top of this. You can just brush it in like that and it's nice and easy. It smells good. You're going to get it nice and clean. And look at that. Now, there's a couple options right there. You can either blot this up with a towel or you can just let it dry and vacuum it all up. Another cool thing about this and the heavy foam carpet cleaner is it's got stain guard in it. What that's going to do is help prevent stains further down the road. So for future carpet cleanings, it's going to make your life even easier. Now Matt's got the floors taken care of. Now it's time to go ahead and give this seat some much needed TLC. We're going to do that with Blue Magic's leather and vinyl cleaner and conditioner. First thing first, you got to clean the surface here good before you can condition it. So we'll take the cleaner, we'll shake it up a little bit, spray it on, and this will get rid of much of the dirt and debris. Now, if you've got a tough set in stain, a second application, it'll take care of it no problem. Once you've got it clean, you immediately want to hit it with the leather cream conditioner. Now you spray it on, it's good for leather and vinyl, just like the cleaner. You wipe it in and you let it penetrate into that leather for about 15 to 30 minutes. This way you're gonna get that rich Corinthian feel everybody wants and it's gonna prevent it from cracking in the future. After that's set in for 15, 30 minutes, you simply buff it out and you are done. Now, last thing we have to do is go ahead and hit the front, the dash and console. So we'll use the dash and console restore, shake it up, put it on your cloth. we we'll find a dry spot here. And this stuff is not only gonna clean it up, but it's going to penetrate into the dash and it's going to give you a nice shine back to it. It's also got an anti-static guard will help dust from um, sticking to it. What I like about it, the fact it's non-greasy. It's going to stay here on your dash or rub off on your hands or on your clothes. Add new style to your truck or SUV with Eurostyle lights. The clear lenses don't diffuse the light, offering a brighter shine for a greater distance than the original. The Euro light uses an ultra clear lens with uniquely styled red reflectors that use the original clear bulbs. The light assembly complies with all federal regulations. Be sure to add a heavy duty headlight harness to ensure maximum light output. The harness draws power directly from your battery as opposed to through your headlight switch. The installation is easy. No splicing or cutting is required. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. With over 30,000 truck parts in stock, you can get the right part at the right price right now. Welcome back to Truck U. This is the Battery Tender Waterproof 800. It's about the size of a computer mouse, so it's nice and small, and it's got that brain in it that's going to charge your battery up to 100% and then maintain it. Now, Matt mentioned small in size. This thing only weighs a pound and can actually be permanently mounted inside your, your vehicle, whether it be a boat or an ATV or a car. You know, when you talk about it being waterproof, it's not splash proof. I mean, this thing can be fully submerged in right. water and it's going to stay working. They back it up with a three year warranty. Absolutely. It's spark proof, it's got reverse polarity protection, it has short circuit protection. All of the things that go into the regular Battery Tender Plus and it's waterproof on top of that. It's the Battery Tender Waterproof 800 from Deltran. Now here's something pretty cool. These are called the knee blades. It's basically about three tools in one. You take a look at this. First of all, you've got the standard knee pad that you can use, right? Then you can lock this baby in, hook it onto your leg, and it will travel around with you so you can keep using it. Then when you really want to take it to the next step right there, you slide that in there. Now on your knees, when you're working on something, you can roll all over the place. It's going to make life a lot easier. Well, check out these cushions inside of it. It's a gel cushion that's really going to protect your knees, and it's also going to save your back as well because you want to be having to get up and down all the time if you're doing any work down on the ground, whether it's polishing wheels in your truck or doing any floor work, you can just roll around and get wherever you need to. It's a really cool product. Now let's face it, we're not getting any younger around here, so anything <laughs> that helps is good. All the parts are replaceable and they're made in the USA. And you know what? I used the heck out of these things when we were working on that race truck. It's the knee blades. Check them out. Now we need to go to break right now, but when we come back, we're going to finish up that countdown.
For more information on anything you've seen on today's show, check out speedtv.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Welcome back to the Duplicolor TV Garage. Brian's back. Good to see you Hi, again. Hey, thanks. So the next step in the evolution of this 1979 El Camino, as it was undergoing some drastic changes, was that you guys had to get up on the bottom side of this and really do a lot of work underneath the vehicle. And at first glance, it sounds like a lot of work. I mean, it really was. I mean, he had 30 years of road debris, grime, grease, whatever is underneath Neglect. There. <laughs> yeah, neglect, sure. And what we did first was we pressure washed half of the underneath of this vehicle to get off the majority of it. Next thing we did was scuffed it down, get you know any loose rust off of there before we shot it with the VHT roll bar and chassis paint. Again, it's all about the prep work as with any other painting process and you had a little bit more prep work probably with this one. So you hit that with the roll bar and chassis paint, everything looks good. Then we moved on down with some more Duplicolor products. Yeah, we chose wheels on this vehicle that exposed the brakes. And we also wanted a high temperature product that can hold up to the heat you know, that the brakes produce. Right. So we chose the VHT caliper pan on the, on the caliper there. Well, Duplicolor and VHT have a full line of products for every application. And again, it's all about using the right paint for the right part. Another great thing, you need to go to their website, check out the Duplicolor TV, watch Brian and Brian and everybody working on this thing and follow along step by step and see everything that went into it, all the work, all the fun that they had. And who knows, you might learn something along the way and maybe in a month or two, you might be doing something just like this. Welcome back to Truck U. Today it's been all about our top 10 list of things that you can do to your vehicle that are going to keep it looking better, keep it running better, and help you hang on to the value of that truck as well. But you know what? There is one left on the list. Matt, let me do the heavy lifting and I'll continue the theme of today. And that's reach into your glove box and pull out your owner's manual. It's really a great guide because it tells you how to keep your vehicle running longer and stronger. Everything from some part numbers that you need for you know replacement parts like right. spark plugs to um, capacities to intervals for your maintenance schedules. All that stuff is right here, and most people don't even take the time to open it up and look at it. Hey, there is a reason that book is three quarters of an inch thick, and it's because it's got a ton of information in it. You want to take a look at some other things as well that jump out at you, like these battery terminals. I mean, I looked at that. I said, look, these are definitely going to need some help. Again, a nice little tool that's going to make your job easy. This little piece right here goes right over the post, and you can brush that and pull that off. Then that comes apart, and you've got the brush on the inside as well. So you can get all these surfaces good and clean and get all that, just the neglect out of there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now we're going to have our, our top 10 list on our website, so you can go check it out and use it as a blueprint for how to keep your vehicle running stronger. Like I said, though, it's not all inclusive to say the least, but believe me, that's all the time we've got today on Truck U to maintain this vehicle. We'll catch you next time. Sounds good. That looks a lot better. <laughs>